If you're brand new to DaVinci Resolve, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you how to use the free version of Resolve, but even if you have the studio paid version, you can still follow along. We're going to look at the interface, how to get nice and organized, how to import clips, how to edit on a timeline, how to export a video project, and more. And my goal is to jam pack as much information as possible into this video while not wasting your time. So remember, at any point, you can pause the video and play it back as you need to. And if you want to follow along with the assets I'm using, then and you can download them in the link below. As we go through, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Before we get started, if you need to download and install DaVinci Resolve, still check this video out first. Now let's hop in there. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve. This is the project manager window. If this is your first time ever opening Resolve, you'll only see this untitled project. All these other thumbnails show previous projects I've worked on. By default, your projects will be saved on this local database on your computer. If you wanna export a project onto something like an external hard drive, you can right click on that project and choose your preferred location. Export project and press save. I'll just cancel that. To create a new project, we can double click on Untitled Project or we can click here on New Project. We can call this project BC since it's from a trip I took with Will to British Columbia. And here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Before we do anything, I think this is super important. Let's turn on Auto Save. Go up to DaVinci Resolve, click on it, Preferences, Go into the user tab here where it says project save and load. You want to make sure that you have live save check marked. Live save does exactly what it says it does. It will save every time you make a change. Let's also make sure we have project backups check marked. This will save our projects in increments depending on what time limit we choose. I like Resolve to perform backups every five minutes. I'm okay with having hourly backups for the past two hours and daily backups for the past two days. If you want to see where your project backup location is, you can click browse and save. DaVinci Resolve has seven different workspaces that allow you to work on different aspects of your video. Since this is a beginner tutorial, we're mainly going to be focusing on working in the edit page, which is where you would put your video project together. But I'll quickly go over what each of these pages does. Starting on the left here, we have our media workspace. This is where you can organize any of your footage, audio, any other different assets that you would use in your editing project. Personally, I don't use this page because you can also import and organize organize your assets in the edit page, which we'll look at in a bit. Next, we have the cut workspace. This is kind of like Adobe Rush. It's a workspace that's designed for quickly putting together a video edit. Let's go into the edit page. This is where I spend a lot of my time as an editor. We will get back to this page in a minute. Next, let's look at the Fusion workspace. This is where you can work on visual effects, basically like Adobe After Effects. In the Fusion page, you work with nodes. You also work with nodes in the Color page. So in the Color page, you are <laughs> obviously are working on color correction, color grading. The Fairlight page is where you'd edit and master your audio. And over here, we have our Deliver page, where you'd render and export your videos. Let's import some media by going over to the Edit page. So we have Media Pool open here. If you don't see this, just click on it to open it up. And you can also click on this icon here to change the view as needed. Let's make sure our master panel is showing so that we can easily import our project assets by tapping over to your Finder window where they are. There's my project asset bin with some footage in it. So let's drag that over into our master. Great, now this pop-up window is gonna show, basically telling you that the clips you've imported have different settings than the default timeline setting. It asks you if you wanna change and says you can't undo this action. They're lying. Yes, you can, I'm gonna show you how to. So for now, just press don't change. And just to show you, if you're not feeling the drag and drop, you can also import your footage or other assets by right clicking in the media pool, choosing import media, finding it and opening it up. I prefer list view. There's just tons as I scroll to the right, tons of information about the media you've imported into Resolve. I don't wanna see all that. You probably don't either. So you can right click here where it says clip name and you can uncheck all the info you don't want to see. Really all I care about seeing is the FPS frames per second, the format, the resolution, and the video codec. 
Now let's choose create column layout. I'll call this Allie's layout. Press OK. And if you wanna move any of these tabs around, you can just click on them and drag them to where you'd like them to be. And now remember that annoying pop-up window that said you wouldn't be able to change your timeline settings once you set them? Well, who cares about that? Let's create a new timeline by going up to File, New Timeline. You can name it whatever you'd like and uncheck Use Project Settings. Doing this brings up a ton more options for us. So let's go over to Format, and here we can change our timeline resolution. Right now, 1920 by 1080 HD is pretty standard, so we can leave that as is. For timeline frame rate, I usually work with 23.976. Choose Create. Here we go, we now have our custom timeline set up. Let's double click on our Project Assets bin, select these four clips, and drag them onto our timeline. Let's get a little more organized so our media doesn't get too cluttered. So within the project assets bin, I currently have my footage. Just tab over to my finder window and I also would like to use this song in my project. So I will click on it and drag it in here to the master panel. Okay, we can see that here. Let's drag it into our project assets. Double click on project assets and we can right click and choose new bin. Let's name it footage. And now select these four footage clips and drag them into the footage folder, AKA bin. Right click again, choose new bin, call it music and drag that song right in there. So on our timeline, you can scroll right or left to move right or left to zoom in, press down on your keyboard command or control and the plus key to zoom out, command or control and the minus key. You can also use this slider right here. If you want to create a little bit more space with any of these panels, you can just hover over them here and drag them around. I don't want to see my media pool right now, so I'll click on it to give us some more space. Okay, let's look at our timeline view options by clicking on this icon here. Let's go to thumbnail view. I prefer to keep film strip on. Let's just turn on none for a sec. If you had none on, you wouldn't be able to see a sneak peek of what's going on within your clip. Go back in there and turn film strip back on. I think it shows you the most information within the clip. Zoom in a bit more. And I also find it really helpful to be able to see your waveforms. Right now, this is our audio, but we can't see anything going on. So. Let's choose display audio waveforms. Now these first three clips are B-roll clips. I don't have any audio recorded, but here in this dialogue clip, now you can see the audio waveform. For organization purposes, you can also rename your tracks. So this first track, click where it says video one, we can rename this dialogue. So I would keep any dialogue clips on this first track. Let's select these three B-roll clips and drag them upwards, which is gonna create a new track. And now where it says video two, we'll click and call this B-roll. And since these three audio portions of our clip are just empty, I don't want the audio to exist on my timeline. Now, if we were to select these three audio tracks to try and delete them, because these clips are linked to the audio, we also have selected the visuals of the clip as well. So if I went and press delete, they're gone. I'm just gonna press Command Z to undo. To only select this audio, you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and now drag. And there we go, we only have these three audio portions of the clip selected, not the clip itself. Press delete and they're gone. Okay, and making sure that we have our selection tool here selected, which you can tell because it's in red, let's grab one of our B-roll clips and drag it partially over top of our talking head clip at the end here. Let's bring our playhead over top of this dialogue clip and we can press the space bar on our keyboard to play this through. As we play that back, you can see that my dialogue clip is playing so the audio would be heard as this B-roll clip is shown. Okay, and I'm just gonna continue to play this clip through here. I'll put it on full screen, which you can do by pressing P on your keyboard. And you'll notice that it was shot in slow-mo. Press spacebar to pause, P again. I actually find it to be a little too slow. So if you wanna change the speed of any of your clips, right click on them, go up to change clip speed. And right now we have it at 100%. I'm gonna type in here, 200%, so it's going twice as fast. Change, and there you go, the duration of the clip has shrunk. You also now have this little clock icon to indicate that the speed's changed. So now let's play this back. There we go, it's playing faster, that works for me. 
Let's right click again, go back into change clip speed. You also have the option to reverse the speed if you want. You can also add a freeze frame. I actually use freeze frame all the time. So let's press command in the plus key to zoom way in here. And wherever you decide to put your playhead is where you will have your freezed frame. So press B on your keyboard, which is the blade tool to cut. You can also select it here. And just on a side note, if you hover your mouse over any of these tools, you'll be able to see the keyboard shortcut. Let's cut here where the playhead is. Now let's grab our selection tool, select that one frame, right click, change clip speed. So let's uncheck reverse speed and choose freeze frame, press change. Now you can hover your mouse over the end of the clip and drag it out however far you'd like. As I scrub through, you'll see that we have a freezed frozen frame. <laughs> and guys, I'm in the process of creating a very in-depth DaVinci Resolve course looking at not only how DaVinci Resolve works, but how I use it as a professional video editor who works on commercials, social media videos, brand campaigns. I would love to hear what you need as someone learning DaVinci Resolve. So please let me know in the comments below. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. So let's scroll over to my dialog clip, press command and the minus key. Okay, so let's say you wanna increase the volume of your dialog. What you can do is hover over this line here. You'll see volume show up and you can increase it by dragging upward to decrease, drag downward. With your dialog clip selected, you can also adjust the volume in the inspector here. So if you don't see inspector, click on it. We're gonna look at inspector more soon. Go over to audio and you can adjust the volume that way. If you wanna undo what you did, you can press this circular arrow here. To trim or shorten any of your clips, hover your mouse over the end of them and drag inward. Let's select our dialogue and B-roll clip and drag it to the left so it's closer to our other clips here. Let's grab our playhead and scrub over B-roll clip two here. So let's say we want this clip to actually start here, showing my back rather than my face. We'll bring the playhead here. Let's grab our blade tool, make a cut. Now you can press A on your keyboard, which brings us back to our selection tool. Select the first part of the clip we don't want and press delete. I'll just zoom in here. Select this space in between our clips and press delete, and that will bring the clips side by side. Let's go up to our media pool and in master project assets, click on music and drag this music track onto our A2 track. Let's just move this track up and drag this right to the beginning where our B-roll clip starts. B for our blade tool here at the end of our footage. Let's make a cut in our music, A on our keyboard for the selection tool. Let's delete that remaining music. Okay, so one thing that you'll wanna do when you are working with music in a video project is you'll wanna fade that music. To do that, hover your cursor over this little white marker looking thing here and drag it inwards. The farther you drag it, the farther the music fade will be. We can do the same thing at the end of our project here. You can solo any of your audio tracks to only hear that track by pressing S and you can mute an audio track by pressing M. If you notice that the dialogue tracks only playing out of one speaker, it might be because your audio one track is set to stereo, which is what this two indicates. Music track should be set to stereo, so that one's fine, but let's change our dialogue track to mono by right clicking on it and choosing change track type to mono. Depending on how long your project is, you may wanna duplicate your music. To do that, select it and hold Alt or Option down on your keyboard, then drag over, let go, and there's your duplicate. Let's just make another one for fun. I also like to lock my music track, which you can do by clicking on this lock icon. With it locked, your music won't move or change even if you accidentally select everything on your timeline and move it over. Let's grab our B-roll clip and drag it on top of this clip here. In Inspector under Transform where it says Zoom, 
you can drag this number smaller or bigger to increase or decrease the size of your clip. You can also adjust the position's X or Y axis to move it around and flip your clip vertically or horizontally. And on a side note, if you want to know our favorite drive that we edit all of our video projects off of because it's super fast and awesome or any of the gear that we recommend and we use, check out the description below. So there are quite a few features you can access in your inspector here and also over here by clicking this drop down menu. Select transform. Now you can click on any of these anchors to decrease the size. Let's just move it over to the corner here. Now we can't see the top part of our frame, but I want to access those top anchors. To be able to do this, click the drop down menu here and choose to zoom out to 25%. There we go, now we can access them. Let's go back to fit screen and select B-roll clip three. Just so you know, if you want to hide the transform border on your program window, click here on the icon and there it's gone. Let's click on this drop down menu and choose dynamic zoom. This green border indicates where the zoom will begin and the red border indicates where the zoom's gonna end. I'm gonna adjust this green border so it's really close up on me and I'll really overemphasize it so you can see what dynamic zoom does. It starts off super zoomed in and ends off on this wide shot, nice. Next, we'll adjust the opacity of this clip so that it fades in. Let's move our playhead about 10 frames into the clip, go up to composite and press on this keyframe to hold the opacity amount that currently shows, which is 100%. Now let's bring our playhead to the beginning of the clip and drag this opacity slider to zero. Doing this will automatically add another keyframe to hold the opacity amount of zero at this point in the clip. And now when we hit spacebar to play this through, the opacity adjustments we made that shot in over top of the talking head clip. Close to the end of the clip, let's add another keyframe, then go right to the end and drag the opacity slider to zero. Since there isn't another clip underneath this part, we've just faded our shot to black. I'd like that fade to black to last a little longer, so click on this keyframe icon, which will show us the position of our keyframes and we can drag them to adjust the duration the opacity change takes place. And if you wanna get rid of these keyframes, just select them and press delete. Next, let's add a quick custom lower third title by opening our effects panel. Click on the magnifying glass to search for text. Drag the text effect onto our V3 track, select it, and in our inspector under title, we can click here and change the default text. You can change the font style, size, and so on. Let's adjust the position to bring this text to the bottom left corner. Drag your text up onto the V4 track. And now in effects, search for solid color and drag it underneath on the V3 track. With solid color selected under generator, let's click on this color to change it. Choose whichever color you'd like and press OK. And now under settings, scroll down to cropping and let's make a rectangle around this text by dragging the crop top down, the crop bottom up and cropping a bit off the right, okay. Another thing that will come in really handy as you edit more and more is knowing how to make compound clips and what they do. Let's select the text and solid color, right click and make a new compound clip. Name it based on the clips or text in this case that will be inside of it. So I'll name it Ali and Will and press create. And now both our text and solid color are within this compound clip. So when we adjust the scale or position of it, both of those assets will be affected at the same time. Let's bring our playhead about 10 frames in or so, go up to position and select this keyframe, bring our playhead to the beginning and drag the X axis all the way to the left so we can't see our compound clip on frame anymore. Now let's press spacebar to play this back. If you need to access the assets within your compound clip, you can right click and go to open in timeline, here they are. So if I wanted to make a change to the wording or anything like that, I could. Now, where's our BC timeline? Well, we can't see it because we need to go to timeline view and choose display stacked timelines. Now it shows in this new tab here. If you ever wanna see a sneak peek of any effects or titles, I'll just make sure titles is selected. As you scrub your cursor over them, you'll see what they look like. Another handy thing to know is to turn visibility off of a track, 
click on this icon and now your assets will remain on the track but you won't be able to see them. I'll just click again to turn it back on. Let's zoom out, turn lock off on our music track, select these two extra tracks and delete them. Select the assets at the end here and drag them inward. Delete this random freeze frame. And when you're working with a clip that has dialogue like this one, you'll wanna lower your music gradually during the talking part. So let's zoom in and bring our cursor just a bit before the talking starts. Holding Alt or Option on your keyboard, you can click on this audio line here to create a point. Then bring your cursor in a bit from where the talking starts, hold Alt or Option down again and add another point. And drag the second point down to reduce the volume of the music to a good starting point around minus 23. You can listen back and adjust the volume accordingly. Great. Now you're gonna be able to hear the dialogue better while also hearing your music. Let's just tidy this project up so we can drag this clip at the end here in a bit and also trim the end of our dialogue clip after the talking stops. Drag our music in two to match up with the end of this clip here. And okay, when you're happy with your project and you're ready to export it with your cursor at the end, press O on your keyboard, which creates an out point. Go to the beginning and press I to create an in point. Everything within our in and out point is what we're gonna export in a second. I just wanna tell you this cause it used to drive me crazy not knowing how to do it. So if you wanna clear your in and out point, hold down alt or option on your keyboard and X. Okay, there you go. In and outs are gone. That keyboard shortcut comes in super handy. So don't forget it. And we actually do want our in and out points in this case. So press command or control Z on your keyboard to undo that. Okay, they are back again. Now let's go over to our deliver page. So as you can see here, by scrolling to the right, you have a bunch of custom options of presets for your export, like YouTube, Vimeo, and so on. Let's stick with the custom export in this case. So you can call your file name whatever you'd like, browse and choose the location you'd like it to be saved. Under the video tab here, everything looks good. You can change your resolution, frame rate, or any of this if you need to. Over here where it says render, click on this drop down menu. So you can either have your entire timeline rendered, which I never really do because sometimes there could be random clips or audio way down at the end of your video project on your timeline. And I just don't think it's good practice. So we will keep in and out range selected, meaning whatever is within the in and out range that we chose will be exported. When your settings are looking all good, choose add to render queue. That will show up over here on the right and choose render all. And once your project's rendered, you'll see it wherever you saved it. So here it is. And there you go, congratulations. In under 20 minutes, you've now learned how to use DaVinci Resolve. The next thing you probably wanna know how to do is color correct your footage. So I highly recommend you check this video out. If you wanna know the gear that we use and recommend, as well as the music we edit with, it's all linked in the description below. I hope you have a lovely day and we'll see you in the next video.